So today we've got a case for you that, uh, that presents an equine practice from time to time, and that's a young horse that presents with some swelling of the lower jaw. Uh, anytime you see that, if it comes on acutely, the first thing you want to do before you do anything is take a radiograph because what you're trying to make sure is that the jaw isn't fractured. If the jaw is fractured, the last thing we want to do is put a speculum on. If I take the speculum right here, uh, which is used to do a good oral exam in the mouth, and we put this in and open the jaw and force it open a little bit, and there's a hairline fracture, we're going to make the fracture worse. So the first thing is to rule out a fracture. The horse we're looking at today, uh, we know that he had a fracture about eight weeks ago. Um, and so in the, the first thing we want to do is assess is the fracture stable or unstable. If it's stable, we can just monitor the horse conservatively and allow for a callus to form and allow the fracture to heal. If the jaw is unstable, meaning that the, the bones are moving, that in those cases, you will, the horse will need surgery, either some form of plates or screws or uh, could be wiring could be uh, external fixators, there's different ways of doing it, but to make sure that the bone is no longer moving. If two bones are moving, they can't heal. So the first premise is that the bones have to be stable. In this case, the fracture was stable because the jaw has two sides, um, and so it, the horse didn't need surgery. What often happens though is that the fracture will run through the tooth roots and it will expose the tooth roots to the bacteria in the mouth and so what will happen secondarily is they'll get a tooth root abscess from either the tooth breaking and getting a pulpitis in the tooth dye or oral bacteria contaminating the pulp and killing the tooth. And so then what happens is now we have a fracture that's trying to heal, uh, but we have this tooth which is infecting, which is going to delay healing. So we try and find a middle ground. Typically we'll do it around eight weeks or so where the bone is healed enough that the jaw is stable enough that we can open the mouth and remove the tooth without causing any problems. If we try to open the mouth too soon, again, to take out the tooth, then we could potentially break it. So uh, let's see what that looks like on him. Here we can see that we've got some pretty significant swelling in this region right here. We can see that this is very enlarged. We can actually go underneath and look up and compare it to the other side and you'll see we get square underneath there that this side is much thicker than this side over here. So we have this, this side here is about this thick and this side of the mandible is about that thick. So we have a big difference right here. So we have a nice callus that's formed. We don't see any draining tracks on him. Sometimes it can get draining tracks uh, where pus is leaking out and uh, we have to deal with those. What we did is we took a radiograph. So let's look at our radiograph here. So we can see that we have a callus around here. We have a very widened periodontal space in this region. And we have a clear periapical abscess uh, and bad tooth. Now, part of the challenge on this horse is it's only two years old, so we don't have a lot of clinical crown because it has a cap. But now for this region to finish healing, we must remove this tooth. And so this is where technique becomes very important. Uh, there's a lot of nuances in, in the techniques uh, just because somebody does extractions doesn't mean that they do them efficiently. It's just like in any, you have good carpenters and you have um, less skilled carpenters and it's the same with everything. So it's very important here to, for veterinarians to really focus on your technique. Uh, we can't just go in here and, uh, and not be precise and focus and surgical. We have to manage all aspects of this horse. And what I mean by that is uh, I don't want this horse to be chewing a lot during the procedure. I don't want to be lollygagging and going slow. I need to be fast and efficient. Uh, I don't want to be rushing, but I need to minimize the surgical time. And there's many ways to do that. Uh, part of it is experience, but a lot of it is just having a good stepwise process, the right types of instruments, the right types of trainings. I'm seeing more and more veterinarians doing extractions, which is good. They're trying to do them through the mouth instead of externally. But, uh, but there's a, a big need for more refining of the techniques and more um, deliberate, thoughtful uh, 
kind of techniques being applied versus just going in and just working and thinking we can fight with the tooth for long enough, eventually get it out. Extraction should be fast. It should be 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes uh, in most cases. It shouldn't be three, four, five, six hours. There is a percentile of cases that are very difficult. Um, there are about 5% that will take significant amount, amounts of time, even with the right type of steps. But most extractions should be minutes, not hours. And if you're spending hours, it means that there's something uh, that can be done a little bit better. And so I encourage you to go work with, with uh, clinicians that, are, uh, that can help you uh, become a little bit quicker and a little bit more efficient and a little bit less wasted movement and wasted steps. Um, and it's not just about the instruments. People all the time talk about, oh, well, you have all these instruments. Yeah, it's true. We have a truck full of instruments and a clinic full of instruments. We have a lot of instruments. But there's very specific ways in which these instruments must be used. And more importantly, the diagnosis must be very precise. The diagnosis is what determines our treatment plan. And you can have two or three cases that look almost identical, that have slightly different diagnoses, which is going to change how I'm going to approach the case. So there's a lot of nuance out there. So I encourage you veterinarians are getting into dentistry to, to really hunt for the subtleties, hunt for the details and hunt for the nuance and you'll get better results. So with that said, we're going to go ahead. We have a plan. Uh, our plan is to make sure the horse is very well sedated, but stable. So we don't want any chewing. We're going to get quick local anesthesia so that the tooth becomes numb as quickly as possible. And then we're going to try and be uh, surgically efficient. So if we look at the time right now, it's, uh, we can show you, we haven't started the procedure. It's 941. And so we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the rest of the treatment and then we'll see how long it takes. So here we can see that lower six is very infected. We have the cap. Um, so we're gonna have to try and do the extraction with um, by removing the baby tooth and then grabbing the tooth underneath somehow. So we can see that the horse's left side, what's on the right of the screen is much steeper. So he hasn't been eating on his left side because it hurts. Um, so that's a sheer mouth due to pain that should resolve as we remove the pain from this bad tooth. Uh, but this is again, we're removing the bad tooth is so important for healing. Okay, so we did the extraction. We can show you the tooth right here. Uh, we can see, you know, here's the deciduous tooth, the baby tooth, and then I'll put that there and then we'll get a little closer so you can see. Um, so here we have the baby tooth, and then this was the tooth that was infected and broken. Here was a dead piece of bone, a bone sequestrum that was, we pulled out with our fingers. That's very painful and responsible for a lot of the swelling and pain. And then here's all kinds of broken, dead, necrotic tooth. Um, so everything, everything went well. We'll show you the, the x-ray. We always want to take an x-ray in these cases to make sure that we've got all the tooth fragments because the tooth was broken up. So we have a radiograph here. Um, so here we can see the socket looks good. Uh, we've got all the parts out of here. And then as far as the time, so it's 10.36. I think we started at 941. So in less than one hour, we did the nerve blocks. We did the surgery. I also corrected the shear mouth. We did the post-operative radiograph and we packed it in about 50 minutes. Again, it's not a race. You don't want to just rush to be fast and make mistakes, but it comes back to this concept of efficiency, surgical efficiency that I was talking about earlier. Um, and I think that's just so, so, so important uh, because it's difficult to do it fast um, if you do and get it like this without doing things well. Um, you can do things fast and not get the good outcome because you're just rushing, you're breaking things and all that and being crude and forceful. That's not what we want. Um, but if you're methodical and things go fast, then that's because your surgical technique is, is precise. So. Um, just be aware of these horses that have enlargement like this of the mandible. Remember, always radiograph before you put on a speculum. Allow the fracture to heal. If it's stable, conservatively. If it's not stable, it needs surgery. 
and then uh, at the appropriate time, remove the disease infected tooth if that becomes necessary. Give us a like and subscribe if you enjoy these kind of videos and share it. Thank you.